The possibility of failure is enough to keep many of us from chasing the things we truly want. John Stocklosa isn't most of us. Lying down on a weight bench in front of a cheering crowd, John stares up at what he wants, to bench press a bar totaling 390 pounds. At five foot four, if he can press the weight, it's an incredible achievement of power. But what's even more impressive, John's doing all of this with Down syndrome. Elbows in. And he is so confident in himself that he <clears throat> has that power. You have to be willing to work with them. It takes time, you know, and perseverance. Anything's possible. I Jonathan Stocklosa. Hi, my name is Liz Stocklosa, better known as John's mom. I'm Hank Stocklosa, better known as John's dad. I'm Doug Frazier, and this is What We Do, the documentary series where you'll meet the people behind the most intriguing passions, hobbies, and jobs around the world. You've competed before, and you've won gold medals, haven't you? Yes. How many? That's a lot. A lot. <laughs> According to John's dad, Hank, there are two things you need to know about John. Lifting is his life, and... No matter what he does, he's absolutely fearless. Hank has a point. If you could squat 450 pounds, bench 405, and deadlift 450, wouldn't that boost your confidence? He does rappelling off of buildings. He does plunges in the cold water. And he is so confident in himself mm -hmm. that the, the, <clears throat> he has that power. It is almost like a superpower, but... <laughs> <laughs> Where does he get his confidence from? He just he just has it. And I'm sure it's been because of his power lifting. We've gone out to regular meets and he'll be standing next to a guy 6'4 who's benching the same thing as as he is. And John's only 5 foot 4. John's confidence trickles into every aspect of his life, including his job at Acme Supermarket where he's worked for 15 years. You might think that's nice of them to hire someone with Down syndrome as a symbolic gesture, but John wasn't given his job. He earned his position in a field of competitive employment, and his coworkers love him. I can't say enough about Acme. They've been wonderful. Everybody says he goes and he's got five mothers there. <laughs> yeah, everybody's, they're, they're looking out after him. That's not to say it's without incident. He's had a couple little things happen with uh, some customers. You can't really believe people are still using the word. And one day a guy was trying to, just real quick, trying to use a motorized cart, you know. And John saw him, and so he went out and, and to the where they have them, and, and it wasn't plugged in, so it wasn't charged. Well, the guy looked at John and he called, he said, well, you are word. So, John, we've told him, just walk away, go find your supervisor, go find one of the front-end managers, don't, don't say anything back. He didn't. When Hank came to pick John up from work, he heard about what had happened and went inside to find the guy. John and Hank spotted him all alone at the end of an aisle. I gave him a choice to ever use that word again or get his head ripped off. <laughs> and um, He said he had a loaf of bread in his cart. He said, I just wanted to take that loaf of bread and just squeeze it and I'll ruin it. Then I had to go to the front office to, at the Acme so I could tell them that I did that so I wouldn't get banned from the store. <laughs> <laughs> in moments like these, whether it's teaching a stranger a lesson we're educating the public at large where John's parents are put to the test. With a touch of wisdom and patience, they take it all in stride. It's stuff you would do for your kids. Maybe we fight it a little bit harder. I think we've come a long way with how to treat people with disabilities. It still happens, don't get me wrong, that people still use the R word and they still say nasty things. But it's not, I think overall, most people are pretty compassionate. But we still run into people who are not understanding. 
A video created by the National Down Syndrome Society stars a cast of people with Down Syndrome define the boundaries society has placed on them. Down Syndrome? Well, there'll be a lot of limitations. Are you sure about that? Featured on tons of media outlets, including the Today Show, the video has a familiar face. John's. Low muscle tone prevents any possibility of achievement in sports. I wouldn't expect much. I was on an Amy winning show. It's a stretch for them to live past their 50th birthday. <laughs> to be blunt with you, it's a lifetime of limitations. Your limitations. Not mine. Not mine. Not mine. Not mine. If you haven't seen it, it's an impactful video that's worth a watch. By illustrating key stereotypes of people with Down syndrome, then proving them to be wrong, the video forces each of us to question our assumptions, some of which we didn't even realize we had. As a father and son duo, Hank and John travel to schools to spread a positive message, one they hope can help shift perspectives. John and I go to different schools and, and talk about bullying and, and using the R word. These school trips with John and his dad have been quite successful. As part of the program, the kids are given a shot at arm wrestling John. The kid named Jason takes the stage to the sound of his classmates chanting his name. He sets up strong, puts his entire body weight into it, but John's arm doesn't budge. Jason, like all the others, succumbed to John's superhuman strength in a show of power and good fun. How often does John train? Two days a week, powerlifting, and then a third day, if, if we're getting close to a meet time, he has a regular trainer that he's had for 15 years. Serious training. John is not one to play around at training. He wrestled in high school. It's a team sport while you're sitting on a bench. And then when you push you out in the middle of the mat, <laughs> you're on your own. We put him in positions where he could fail. And what we do is we watch to see what he could do. Are there parents who ever tell you that you're pushing him too hard by doing something like that? Yeah, somebody asked me, why do you do that? Why do you put him in a position where he could fail? I said, because that's how you grow. And if you can't grow, John would never be John. A lot of parents that, especially with Down syndrome that we see, that they really baby their kids. They, you can't grow if somebody's doing everything for you all the time. Don't let you do anything for yourself. Some of those things John can do? Mowing the lawn on a riding lawnmower, using his iPhone's voice-to-text feature to keep in touch with family and friends, and even boxing. Hank and Liz take extra caution for certain things, but the collection of John's impressive skills are a result of a single, simple parenting philosophy. It's okay to fail, but it's not okay to give up. I post on a, on a group called Fathers Only. You have to be a father and have to have a kid with Down syndrome. We post the things that John does as a... Uh, not bragging, usually. Uh, but it's to go ahead and tell people that there are things out there that you don't even think of. You have to be willing to work with them. It takes time, you know, and perseverance. Anything's possible. We just uh, put them out there to go ahead and say, okay, here's the things that are happening. Mm -hmm. and the other one that we put out all the time is uh, pretty girls kissing them on the cheek. <laughs> <laughs> now that, that's bragging. There's there's some bragging right there. <laughs> Everywhere we go. Since their recent retirement, Liz and Hank have been asked a lot about their travel plans. We can't go as freely as other retired couples because we have Jonathan. But I always tell them that was our choice. You know, other people have placed them in group homes and such where I do not want him. I want him here where I know he's safe. It's taken a lot of sacrifices to raise a champion like John. But Hank and Liz have found immense happiness in raising him and his two older brothers. 
We just celebrated 50 years of marriage. Oh, congratulations. Ten happily. <laughs> <laughs> we, we made it. How has John changed your lives? <laughs> Every possible way you can think of. Just before our interview ended, John shyly approached with something on his mind. W- one thing? Yeah. Sorry to bug you. Uh, <laughs> our two, 2018 Harmony Fame for our Best Olympics. Being inducted into Delaware's Hall of Fame for Special Olympics put John back in front of a crowd. This time, he traded his lifting uniform for a suit. Hank and Liz watched proudly as John began his acceptance speech. Sorry, I'm a new Anubis. <laughs> Hi guys, I am happy tonight. Yeah, John. He has always risen to the challenge. He has always been there, ready to do the next step. For John and his parents, every moment is a chance to do and be their best. Hey, it's Doug. Thanks so much for listening. When you get a chance, would you mind leaving a rating and review for the show? It only takes a few seconds and it's a huge help. There are a ton of fun episodes coming up, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any. To watch a video version of the series, head over to facebook.com slash whatwedodocs. That's what we do, D-O-C-S. Until next time, stay curious. What We Do with Doug Frazier is distributed by WHRV for WHRO Public Media.